your grandson the right thought. Welcome to the school of marvelous light. We as the little flock are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. We're not ignorant of his devices. Which means, obviously, we don't ignore the tricks, the tactics, and the ways in which he uses to manipulate us, to persuade us, to affect us. We don't ignore his devices. We pay attention. And we know his devices, which are our senses. Our flesh is the device in which Satan uses to attack us, manipulate us, persuade us, to listen to him. Because that's what this all is about. Who you worship means who you listen to. Whose words you take into your heart as true. So the devil or deceiver tries to give you words, <laughs> circumstances that aren't true. But if you believe them to be true, then what have you done? You've made him your God. You worship him. You see? And one of those things is his unchangeable laws. Once you know the truth of them, then you're set free from all of the deception and devices and senses. <laughs> you're set free from your senses. You're set free from the flesh or the world. All of these things mean the same thing. You're set free from their judgment, which is wrong because man judges wrong. He judges in error. I often say it and I often point to it in the scripture so that you can see it, so that you can realize the world you've been living in, which is all wrong judgment. It's all, it's all about how something looks. It's all about the devil and what he tells you it is. Put it that way. Let's simplify it. It's all about what he tells you. And one of those things is trying to make you bitter to where you can't forgive. Now, it's easy to forgive when you know the truth and you've been set free from all the lies. <laughs> and the biggest lie is you have to do something which is what I was telling you guys you have to react you have to physically react to what he's done you have to do something take matters into your own hands whatever you want to call it well that doesn't allow for forgiveness you see that doesn't allow for for uh, peace peace inner peace, serenity, calmness, peace be still. It doesn't allow for that when you're harboring some type of bitterness, vindictiveness, or unable to accept God's law of you reap what you sow. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, when somebody does something to you and it affects you, see, then you start to forget God's laws. You start to forget his unchangeable ways, which no man can escape it. Once you know that truth, you're set free from what somebody has done to you. You ain't mad anymore. <laughs> you ain't bitter because you know that somebody who does something to you is only going to reap that themselves. And you also don't have to watch them. <laughs> you don't have to watch their life to see or to make sure that they reap this, that they have this reaping of what they've sowed. As, uh, in other words, you're not going to be satisfied until you see them suffering for what they've done to you. <laughs> you see? If someone has caused you to suffer, then they will indeed suffer equally. You see? It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are. God is no respecter of persons. And a lot of times, people only want to see one half of that. Like I said in a previous video, when I said you will be rewarded for what you do. A lot of people only hear reward as a good positive thing. You see? Like it's only a good thing. Same thing with reaping what you're sowing. You can only reap what you sow. Very simple. So if somebody does something to mistreat you, 
or does something that they feel like is going to kill you or to end your existence or whatever they think is going to happen by what their actions are. They're only doing it to themselves. You see how you're set free by the truth of that? Now the question is, do you believe that or not? Because if you believe it, then that would change how you treat people. <laughs> see, you believing it doesn't cause you to only hold other people accountable to how they treat you. And you're pointing the finger saying, hey, man, don't do that to me, man. Treat people the way you want to be treated. But first and foremost, it must come out of your own heart. You see? Wait a minute. If that person is going to reap what they sow, then so am I. It causes us all to watch what we do. And it simplifies all of the things that we've learned in our life. By that simple question, would I want somebody doing it to me? If the answer is no, then why did you do it? If you don't want it, why would you do it? That simplifies everything. That one question, well, is that what he told us? Yes, it is. And so it changes, it sets you free from all of any type of deception that can be used. You see what I'm saying? Any type of other influence in your life that make you mad, want to argue, want to huff and puff and have a bad attitude, want you to be short-tempered, quick to wrath, and all of the things he told you not to do and not to be. Y'all see that? It causes you to go astray from the truth, which is, well, if they did something to me that was wrong or iniquity or unbalanced or unfair or just evil, what does the master tell me to do? Pray for them? Render good for evil? Okay, so that makes it simple. Give the person what I would want. <laughs> That's simple. And so a lot of people, they don't know what they want. So then they don't know what to give. Or they're deceived in what they want. Some people may say, well, I want to kill myself. Or I want my life to end. Or whatever the case may be, then that's what they're going to give out to others. And you, what's your job? To respond to that or to be affected by that or to stay where you're supposed to be, which is, I'm only going to give what I want in return. <laughs> if that's what he wants, that's on him. But I can only give what I want. What did Christ say? I came to give life and give life more abundantly. Son of man came not to kill, but he came to save life. And that's how you save it. It's by not rendering evil out of your heart. Not being the catalyst for any type of negative energy that could possibly come back to you. Nope, you're cleaning up your own karma. Because if you forgive, will you be forgiven? Now, listen to that. Doesn't that mean that Satan is going to do everything in his so-called power to convince you that you shouldn't forgive? Why you are a coward if you forgive? Why you are lacking something if you forgive, why you are, whatever the case may be. The only reason you can't forgive is because you don't believe that I was going to render his justice. See, so then you ain't keeping his commandments no way. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? <laughs> you ain't keeping his commandments if you don't believe that your brother is going to suffer for doing you wrong. You understand that? It's very subtle what I'm saying. That's why I keep saying, do you understand it? Hey, brother, you're doing something evil to me. I would advise you not to. See, this is rendering good for evil. Somebody do something evil to me, watch. I would advise you not to do that, brother, because you're bringing that on yourself. But if you insist on suffering this injustice that you're giving to me, well, then go ahead and keep on giving it. But it's going to come back on you. So all I can do now is forgive you for your trespass. Make sure you understand the word trespass. So then you understand, so that you understand what you're forgiving. Because <laughs> man has come up with their own ideas of what sin is. It's best to just let Abba tell you what it is. Sin is not loving your neighbor as yourself. Sin is not loving yourself. Ultimately, sin is not loving. See how simple math that is? Not hard. Very easy. Very simple. So it ain't hard to see, Israel. 
that it all comes out of you. Just like Christ said. Out of the heart come the issues of life, man. <laughs> Once you know the truth, you are so set free. You know who's divvying out the issues of life. Your heart is. So then you complain when something bad happens to you, something negative happens to you, as if that's not your opportunity to do what Christ told you to do. Because guess what? How can you forgive those who despitefully use you unless you are despitefully used? How can you be hated without a cause unless there is somebody hating you without a cause? Now, what is more unjust than that? What is more unjust than being hated for no reason? <laughs> There's no more iniquity than that. At least have a reason. Even if it's a petty ass reason, at least have a reason. But if you hating somebody for no reason, there ain't really nothing we can do about that. We can't reconcile that within ourselves. We're like confused by it. <laughs> we of the little flock that is. But he's already prepared you and warned you for it so that you can show forth the high calling of Christ that is in you when you're called to do a high thing, in other words. All right, somebody's about to despitefully use you. What did I tell you to do when that happens? Now, depending on what you do determines who your master is or who your God is or who you worship and who you serve. You see? Now, a lot of the little flock in times past would just respond based off of what the world told us on how to respond. Well, the world only gives you false advertisement or, in other words, outward appearance. These people of the world are more concerned with how it appears more than what it actually is. A great example of this is GMO food. <laughs> GMO food is a prime example of what I'm describing to you. Well, it looks like it is to the senses, but it's not. It's not the same thing. That's why they got a different number on there. That's why it's called by a different name. One's called conventional, one's called organic. This is different. But it looks the same, so it must be the same. It may have the same results when I eat it. Nope. But that's the world you live in. I'm using that as an example. They do this with everything. And like I said, once you see it, you're set free from it. Oh, wait a minute. They're not concerned in this world with whether it's true or not. They're concerned with whether it looks like it is or not. Oh, okay, now I understand why Christ said I'm not of this world. <laughs> now I understand why he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Now it all makes sense now. Now I'm set free. I can laugh now. See, when before you would just mourn, be bitter, be angry, full of uh, maliciousness. So you can't be malicious and serve Christ. Because what Christ tells you to do is the opposite of what maliciousness tells you to do. Maliciousness never tells you to forgive. It never tells you to turn the other cheek. It always tells you that what you're looking at is real. And so you need to do something. You need to put justice forth. You need to decide. You need to decide. Well, you can't see all variables involved. So you don't know what needs to be done. That's why you leave it in the hands of your father who sees all. So if you know that's true, see how the truth sets you free, then your father saw the mistreatment that you suffered, didn't he? And he's the one who says you reap what you sow. So whoever made you suffer unjustly will also suffer unjustly. So then go on your way. You don't know when or how. That is not man's job. I've often said it and I will often repeat it so that you can understand it. The when and how something happens it's not your job. So don't try to make it your job. <laughs> Let it be. Submit to it. Just like you submit to his laws that say you reap what you sow. Well, I know you say you reap what you sow, but this guy stole from me. And he's just been going on in life, partying, looking like he's making it rain at the club, looking like he's having a good time, looking like. Because that's this world you live in. 
y'all could just understand that, looking like. That's all they care about. A lot of people dying of a terminal illness are at the club making it rain. Having a good time partying and saying, oh man, whatever, man, let's have a good time. <laughs> you think they're happy, but they're dying. Many people looks like, it looks like, but it ain't. So when you know the truth of the matter, then you accept the truth. You don't even respond to the lie. You just, you just stay in the truth. Okay. <laughs> well, I know you telling me this because you want it to look like you're clean. I know. That's what people do in this world. They paint the outside up to look clean. How do I know? Because my master told me that. He warned me ahead of time that that's what y'all be doing. Because y'all only judge outward appearance. It looked like you got away. It looked like you hit a lick. It looked like, but then if, if it did, then that mean God lied. So now I want you to tell me, did God lie to you when he said you'll reap what you sow? So then why y'all stealing from each other? Why y'all killing each other? Why y'all robbing each other? Why y'all slandering each other? Why y'all bearing false witness? You see, because that's what you want for yourself. You want somebody to bear false witness and cause you to be put to death? That's what you want? You want to bear false witness on somebody and cause them to be put in prison on a lie? That's what you want for your life? Because you don't, it doesn't matter what you tell God what you want out your mouth. It matters what you tell him what you want from your dealings and your doings. That's how you're telling God what you want by what you do to your brothers. It is an interconnected thing. You can't get away from that and you can't change it. Because Abba say he changed not. Christ his son said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means the same thing. Because they always saying the same thing because they agree. Nobody can get away from that. You think you can do have to receive something good without giving good. It's not the way gardening works. He said when he created you, he made you a gardener, a husbandman. It doesn't matter what you want it to be because you ain't the potter. You're the clay that the potter has formed. And now you're looking at the potter saying, what has thou made? And why have you made me this? The clay don't say that to the potter. Just like if you got some clay and you shaped it up to look like whatever shape you wanted it to look like and you thought it was perfect. But then you breathed some life into it and it looked at you and told you it was ugly. You're like, you're not ugly, don't say that. That's wicked. That's what Abba says when he says, don't take my name in vain. <laughs> don't say you're ugly. Don't say you're stupid. Don't say you're lacking because I made you perfect. I made you just like me in my image. So you're telling me my image is ugly. Yep, I am dumb. It says God's image is ugly. It's dumb. I am uh, stupid. Yep, you're saying God's image is stupid. Because his name is I am. When you know the truth, you're set free. Like he said, oh, I am is the truth. I am is the way. I am is the life. Okay, so if I am in a situation, which I can't deny that I am, then if I want life, then speak life. Don't take his name in vain then. Because if I take his name in vain, then I'm killing myself. Because I'm made in his image, not my own image. The potter talking to the pottery, not the pottery talking to the potter. You guys are doing it backwards, telling God, what has he made? Who are you to think you can make me into this and this right? I'll tell you what I am. Okay, did you make you? No. So then how can you tell me what you are? Your identity is hid in your maker. And who is your maker? Christ. Because all things were made by him, for him, through him. Nothing that was made, that, that was not made by him. You hear that? Nothing that was made that was not made by him. So that includes you. But you're so worried in what somebody else is doing as if that has any bearing on what you receive. No. Christ said, man, you have no power over me unless my Father in heaven had given it to you. You can't do nothing to me unless Abba has made it so. And Abba has made it so because of his own will. And who am I to kick against his pricks and fight against his will? That would be an old vain man. <gasps> so I don't kick against what he's created. If he's creating me to do what I'm doing right now, then that's what I should be doing. And I can't not do that because somebody thinks that it's not right. Hey, grandson, well, you're not dressed right. 
to be a servant of God. You don't talk good enough to be a servant of God, grandson. But I know the truth, and the truth has set me free from all your lies. All you're going to tell me is a whole bunch of stuff, outward appearance, and how it sounds outwardly. That's all you got, because I told you from the beginning, I know the devil's devices. Just like this cell phone in my hand is a device. He got a device he used, and it affects your senses. Tries to make you call a lie of God. You're not what God said you are, because you don't have the outward things that, that make it right. What? <laughs> what? So wait a minute. I need to have on a certain robe, certain watch, certain type of jewelry and all of that. Then God has called me to be a servant. That's what you're saying? Hmm. All right. Well, let's see what the Bible says. Oop, it said that that's the people that do that. It's fake. That they're deceivers. Deceiving, them, deceiving themselves and others. Yep. Yep. That's actually what it means. See how I'm true? And so I'm set free from the lie? <laughs> that there's something outside of me that makes me what I am? How can that be? How can something outside of me make me into something instead of what is in me makes me what I am? Now, what are you looking at? What is on the outside of me or what is in me? Then that tells what child you are because man judges one way and God judges a different way. So you decide which way you're going to judge today. See the one, Mr. Allen.